Bless be I, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy set apart name. In you shy the true and living word, I shall be confident. In you shy the true and living word, the Father, Ahia, I am that I am, shall be glorified. Um, happy set apart day, brothers and sisters. I pray that you all are well. Today, um, this video, in this video, we will we will be talking about um they that wait upon the most high. And um, this lesson is a wonderful lesson I was I have received earlier this week. Could not wait to bring it out, but I knew when I was able to. So without further ado, let me go ahead and proceed. I attempted to go live this morning, but there's been some issues with my router, and I don't want to go in the office area right now and deal with that because I've already have everything set up and um, so all praise and glory to the most high I'm going to proceed all right starting in Revelations chapter 12 and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars as she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. Now, it's amazing how when we're talking about the woman, that was a, a great sign. Great signs simply mean it's signifying something. When speaking of the woman, of course, it was a woman. And then speaking of the dragon, it's referred to as a hem. Okay. I'm looking at this camera. I'm supposed to be looking at this one. <laughs> but, uh, mm, so I'm getting confused. So I got my phone on my, own, on my laptop. All right. Anywho. Now, and his tail drew the third parts of the stars of heaven. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, stood before the woman. And the elder shall serve the younger. <laughs> I'm going to let the Holy Spirit snitch today. Okay. The woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, as a nation, when we was uh, being birthed, when you talk about Abraham and Sarah, it, it came out of the um, the power and the promise of the Most High. When um, Mary gave birth to the King Yeshia, um, that was also by the works and promise of the Most High. And when Jacob and Esau was born, before any either of them have done any good or evil, the election and the promise and the power of the Most High um, divinely ordained Jacob to be the upright one. All right, so it means before they did anything, the lot and the mannerisms was chosen for Esau and the lot and mannerisms was chosen for Jacob. Hence, this is why they were fighting in the womb. Okay. Moving forward, but specifically the focus in this particular uh, sign, our significance here is the um, talk, this, the speaking of the birth of our nation. Um, when even though we know that Mary birthed Mashiach, that was when he was on the earth. That was the establishment of the kingdom. Okay, the revision of the covenant. All right, but. When we're looking at the significance here, that woman is also talking about our nation. It is speaking about our nation because as a bride to the creator, we're married to him. Excuse me. And we are called to the most high, okay, and covenant with him. So that this childbearing is like talking about the birthing of the kingdom because the Messiah ushered in the kingdom on the earth. All right. Now, it says, 
Um, and, I, and it said, the, the dragon stood before the woman, which verses four, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. We know that when the Messiah was born, Herod, which was an Edomite, which is the significance of the red dragon, okay, um, put out a decree for all baby boys, um, one, I think, on down, or maybe somewhere within that range to be killed because he was trying to stop the birth of the Messiah, the king. And this is why um, it was prophesied to Joseph, or not prophesied, the angel appeared to Joseph. And the reason I say the angel is because um, the revelation and knowledge the Most High has given me, I'm on a different level. I can't speak against what I've been revealed. I try not to say too many things because everybody's faith isn't where my faith is. And so sometimes when you give, you drop gems or give revelation to the immature, they act out and the and the, the, gym, the gym is trampled over. So I'm not going to allow the Most High's wisdom to be trampled over the ignorance of uh, the brethren and the sistering. But um, like I was saying, uh, the importance here is that the, the, the red dragon in this context here is talking about Edom. We see that when talked about also that it fell from heaven and it wagged its tail and a third part of the stars fell with it. So we know that when um, Lucifer was cast out of heaven, he um, turned, you know, some angels with him. And also when you look in Isaiah 14, I want to bring this out. Isaiah 14 shows that um, it says, he said, I will be like the most high. Okay. Let me get that. Verse 14 of Isaiah 14. Um, we start over here at verse 12, actually. And it says, how are you falling from heaven? O Lucifer, son of the morning, how are you how are you cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? Okay. How did he weaken the nations? With his demonic philosophies and deception. Alright, because the strength of any nation is the most high. So a nation without the most high is weak. Um, and that includes Jacob. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of the most high. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. I will sit above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. You look on the earth today, and you're looking for a people who change the image of the Most High, change the truth into a lie. Um, it's clear it was the nation of Edom, okay, known as the Caucasians. They can come in different flavors of European, Spaniard, um, Russians, Britons, or UKs, it don't really matter. Um, they're scattered upon the earth because the word said that he would not dwell in his tents. All right. The scripture. So when you look at he said, I was um I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north. You go to Psalms 48. I'm show you who he's talking about, he's gonna sit on top of. This is what, what I want to show you all family is about this video title is, um, they that wait upon the most high. And when you think about when our people wake up, they always wake up to the Deuteronomy 28, which is the curses, but there's a curses upon man. Now as a nation, we receive curses due to disobeying the covenant or breaking the covenant. Right. But also there's a, um, there is a woe and a destruction to all men upon the earth because it says in Revelation 12, um, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth because the devil has come down to you. All right, but let me get Psalms 48. All right. Hold up. 
it says, verse 2, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. So when you look at Isaiah 14 and you see Lucifer telling him, I'm going to sit on the sides of the north, the congregation, he telling him, I'm going to sit on top of Mount Zion and exalt his cell. So look over there in, in um, the east today in this place where everybody's calling the land of Israel, right? The so-called promised land, right? You can clearly see it's not the children of Jacob over there. It is Edom, okay, these Jewish people over there today who are Caucasian, which will identify them as the nation of Edom, which is also the dragon. And there is a people on the earth who the enemy uses to exalt themselves as like they're like the Most High. But they're not. And like the Most High, which means coming in a form of righteousness or a form of godliness concerning his, his oracles, but they are not. This is why in Revelation they say, they, they say they are Jews, but are not, but are the synagogue of, of Satan. A synagogue is a temple, okay, a gathering, all right, of, not gathering, but a temple of the devil or the wicked one. The nation of Jacob, those that be the upright ones, born again through the spirit of the Most High, they are the temples of the Most High. So this is why in Matthew 24, it speaks of kingdom against kingdom. Now, if it's kingdom against kingdom, and when the Messiah was on earth, he simply said to Pontus, my kingdom is not of this world. world. So it, it's going to literally be a people against another people because the temples of the Most High are in um, opposition to the kingdom of the wicked one. And with that being said, let me address another individual. Um, as y'all, as most of my subscribers may know, if you watch me for some time and you're still watching me as of to this day, you know, a long time ago, I addressed a woman by the name of Carrie Ann Gideon, a false prophetess. Just yesterday, there is a individual who came on my channel asking me questions during a very busy productive preparation day concerning this woman now mind you i had a dream a long time ago of a woman chasing me head covering fringes on and all this in the third and when we went before the throne she fell no this is not one particular woman this that woman is a great sign like it's mentioned in revelation but however this woman is the woman who has a image of righteousness or She's coming off like she's of the most high and the father ain't dealing with her. That woman, if, if, if in Revelation 12, it's talking about the woman as a great sign, speaking of our nation, then there's another woman. There is, how do I say this? There are people who are a false bride, a false yeah, false bride, and the father's not with you. Um, just last video I did, which was the fifth day of the week, um, addressing Holly, the Holly Tree, aka a highest, so-called a highest house, via by um a gentleman by the name of or a character by the name of Holly. Um, this is what it is right now. The father is, um. This is why we're to be strong and courageous and fearless because the righteous are bold as a lion. We're not going to um, allow wicked vessels to speak in the name of a Hyatt operating, operating under the spirit of air. Carrie Ann Gideon is a false prophetess. I've seen that long time ago before she decided to put on white and start saying a Hyatt. Carrie Ann Gideon was a false prophetess or messenger all the way back when she tried to declare three days of darkness, which was around a time of COVID-19. She's a character that sits on YouTube, watches different people, and then comes up with her own imaginations. The Most High High is not with her. The Most High High is not dealing with her. The Most High High did not appoint her. A lot of these characters on YouTube are self-appointed messengers. I mean, after all, they're fulfilling the scriptures written concerning them. When we know that our king stated that in the last days uh, there will be false prophets arise and that shall deceive many. So if you're deceived by them, it's clear who you um who you serve. You serving a deceiver. You receiving his messengers. 
you won't receive the messages of truth because you did not receive the spirit of truth because the world cannot receive it. Revelations 12 again. Now, and it says, and the woman, now let me go to five, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up into a higher and to his throne. We clearly know who this is. This woman is, uh, the, the, the significant sign is talking about our nation giving birth to um, the King Yeshia. It's not to make all um, focus on Mary alone because she was a vessel the Holy Spirit chose to use. Okay, She was in the lineage and the bloodline that the Father chose to use. All right. So this isn't a sign. This isn't like Mary um, in, a, in an image or a sign or whatever like that. Okay, because the Catholic Church, the Catholic, the, the the Roman Holy Empire tried to use use um, so-called a, a woman who gave birth without um, a man, which is actually talking about those other entities that they worship. And I'm not going to speak their name on this holy day, but um, those characters are certainly um, not, they have nothing to do. They were risen up to, so that others can question the mannerism of how the father chose to bring his son which is to be a, his spirit, not a corruptible seed. All right? And anything from flesh is corrupt, corruptible. If the father going to say he looked out upon the children of men and to deem that they are none good, why would the father sit here and um, subject his holy seed to come via by the seed of man? When we know that the Mashiach was before uh, Joseph, before Abraham anyway, so that's another rebuke to GOCC, who teaches that Joseph is the biological father of the Shia. When we see in the scriptures, Joseph was willing to put Mary away. All right. And the woman, and the woman verse 6, fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared of the Most High, that she they should feed her there. A place prepared of the Most High, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days and one must wonder who the they is and there was a war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven we know that when the Messiah went up to the to the throne, he snatched the keys. Not to the keys in heaven, but he went down to the earth and snatched the keys. That earth, that that hell or whatever, was when he came on the earth. He was not buried underground. He was in a tomb. Once he was in that tomb. His very sacrifice already took the authority from the king, from from Lucifer and his angels, because he he conquered death. So the way Christians have taught that would have had you to believe that he went down into some shio or down to some deep depths of the, of the ground and snatched the keys. Though he was in a borrowed tomb for three days. We know his death showed the victory of no dominion with death anymore via by sin. All right, let me make sure my volume is up. Ain't no time.